The text or the title of my message today is that faith said prepare. So if you're writing that down, you got the word faith in there and you have the word prepare in there. That's my subject. And so when we look throughout scripture, um, God has called us to be people of faith. He's called us to trust in him. He's called us to walk with him. He's called us to honor him. He's called us to believe him. God has called us to have faith. Faith means to trust in something, to hope in something, to believe in something. And we know the scripture says that it's impossible to please God without faith. And so faith becomes extremely important to what we do, what we say, how we live, if we want to honor God in everything that we do. And so uh, if you are listening to us online, I want you to type in prepare and I want you to type in faith in the comments because that's our subject today. Faith says prepare. Through our scripture, when the Lord calls us and charges us to be people of faith, faith tells us us to trust God. Faith says that God can do the impossible. When you look at uh, what we, who we call the father of faith, Abraham, Abraham was called to trust God and to believe God for something that he couldn't see. You know, you got to think of Abraham. He was old. His wife was old. And God said, I'm going to use you to have a child. And so uh, he didn't believe it. Any, and God said, is there anything too hard for me? That's what he told Abraham. And so he told Abraham, you've got to trust me. You've got to believe me and believe me for the impossible. So sometimes faith tells us to trust God. Sometimes faith says that God is going to do the impossible. Amen. That you're faced with something. You don't know how to do it. You don't know how to, you know how to deal with it. But faith says I can deal with and I can do the impossible. I already got an amen here from the three or four folk that are sitting right with me. Faith says God can do the impossible. But also faith says uh, that you can face your enemy when you're afraid. Uh, step up to the plate, Moses. Moses was, 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 had messed up some stuff and he was in the wilderness and God spoke to Moses and he said, Moses, go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. In that moment, uh, Moses had left Egypt because he was afraid of Pharaoh and now God is telling him to go back to Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh something that Pharaoh surely wasn't going to do. But faith in that moment told Moses, don't be afraid of Pharaoh. Go tell Pharaoh, let my people go tell Pharaoh I am that I am sent you you may be afraid but I will be with you because so sometimes faith catches us when we're afraid and God comes alongside of us and tells us don't be afraid why because I'm right there with you I'm standing right there with you you don't have to worry because I'm beside you it's one thing if you were going in your own power but faith says God will be with you matter of fact Jesus said I'll never leave you nor forsake you so faith not and tells us we can trust God, we can believe God for the impossible, but faith says when I'm facing my enemy, I don't have to worry because God is going to be right there with me. He's going to stand with me and give me everything I need. Also, if you look a little further, faith says that God can open up doors. We just listened to a song that said, God will make a way. God moves mountains. Well, for Moses, uh, there was a moment in time where he was standing. God said, go in that direction. But it didn't make any sense to go in that direction because there was a mountain to the left, a mountain to the right, and a, and a body of water, and a sea in front of them. And so that didn't make any sense. They had Pharaoh to their backs, mountains to the left and right, and seas in front of them. But faith says that God will make a way when there is no way. Oh, that's a shout right there. Uh, there. There was no door. There was no entrance way. There was a, a no pathway. But God can make a way. God can make a pathway. God can open a door even when there doesn't appear to be any door. And can I help you? God doesn't need to open the door until you get there. Oh, that's a shout right there. Amen. You worried as if, Pastor, the door's not open. That's all right. It doesn't need to be open until you grab the handle. It doesn't need to be open until you apply for the job. It doesn't need to be open until you are ready to go in that direction. God didn't need to have the door open in the Red Sea uh, three days before they got there. He just needed to open it when they stepped right there at the edge of the water. And beloved, that's the kind of God we serve. A God that you can trust. A God that can do the impossible. A God that will stand with you when you're dealing with, with the, when you're facing trouble you're facing the enemy but a God that can open doors but not as that faith says God can provide over and over God is letting his know that he is a provider when the when they were in the wilderness they were worried about how they were going to get fed and God provided 
God provided even when there was no mechanism of provision. Can I help you? God will come up with a way to provide for you that may have never been created. That's why you can't limit God. I, 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 the, the Israelites had gone into the wilderness with no expectation that God was going to give them manna in the morning and, 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 and provide for water out of rocks sometimes. Uh, they had, that was not written down anywhere. They, that was not in the tour guide. That wasn't in the vacation brochure. They didn't hear. They didn't know that. This was not in all. They God had turned the wilderness experience into an all-inclusive resort. Y'all know about all-inclusive. All-inclusive is when you go and when you get there, all the food is free. They didn't know when they left Egypt that God was going to take them into an all-inclusive wilderness situation. That's a shout right there because God can give you favor in the wilderness situation. And beloved, we're in a wilderness situation right now. But guess what? He gave favor and later on, you know, excuse me, even before Moses, Jacob got favor in a famine. So even when there is a famine situation, even when there is a difficult situation, God can turn your lack into an all-inclusive buffet. That's good. So we see, we, we, so faith says you can trust God. Faith says God can do the impossible. Faith says that you can face your enemy. Faith says God will open doors. Faith reminds us that God can provide. But faith also says do not be discouraged or afraid. Joshua was dealing with the death of Moses. And how was he going to lead the people? And God told him, do not be discouraged. Joshua chapter 1. Do not be afraid. The way, he said, the same way I was with Moses is the same way I'm going to be with you. Uh, so Joshua had to look back. He said, hold on. You're going to be with me? You were, in, you were with Moses in a mighty way. God said, the same way I was with Moses is the same way I'm going to be with you. See, that's a shout right there because uh, that means, hold on, what are you saying, Pastor? The same way I got them through, the same God that got them through, is the same God that can get you through. I don't know what you're dealing with. I don't know what you're facing, but I had to let you know it's the same God. He told Joshua, don't worry. I'm going to be with you just like I was with Moses. I gave Moses victory. I'm going to give you victory. I gave, I provided for Moses. I'm going to provide for you. I gave Moses wisdom. I'm going to give you wisdom. I gave you, I gave Moses every, all the tools that were necessary. I'm going to give you all the tools that were necessary. When Moses came into a spot where it was difficult, I gave him an answer. And it's, when you get into a spot that's difficult, I'm going to give you an answer. When folk uh, uh, betray you, when folk talk mean about you, when folk talk about you, I'm going to give you favor in that situation the same way I gave Moses favor in that situation. I upheld Moses and I'm going to uphold you. I kept Moses and I'm going to keep you. I blessed Moses and I'm going to bless you. The same way I was with Moses, the same way I'm going to be with you. Uh, faith. So faith says a lot of things. Faith even told David, giants are going to fall today. Nobody ever seen a giant go down with a little rock. They had seen people fight with swords. They had seen pipe people fight with shields. But David came uh, with, with a little bit of rock, and he knocked the giant down. So faith can do all of these things. Faith says God will even fight your battles. Uh, Jehoshaphat stepped up to the plate. Jehoshaphat came, and they were outnumbered. But God gave them the victory. He even told Jehoshaphat, you ain't going to have to fight today. All you have to do is stand and watch for the deliverance of the Lord. Can I help you? There's going to be some time where stuff is outside of your hands, outside of your power, outside of what you're going to do. And all you're going to be able to do is stand and watch God work. I'm here to let you know somebody's facing something right now. Your issue right now is just to stand on the promises of God and trust God, praise God. God, worship God, honor God, be obedient to God, and watch God fight your battles. Oh, that's, I, look, there's been some moments in my life, nothing I could do, but I could just have to watch God fight my battle. Your children might be out of control. There's nothing else for you can do. You tried everything. There comes a moment where all you can do is say, Lord, I need you to handle this. I need you to fight this battle for me. I am out of resources. I'm out of ideas. I don't know what to do, I don't, I'm, but I need you to work this thing out. Faith says God will fight your battles. Amen. Somebody, God will fight your battle, but God will give you the victory. So faith says all of these things. That's just my introduction. Haven't gotten to the sermon yet. And the last thing I'll say, faith, faith can restore what the enemy stole from you. 
The Bible says that when David lost something, the enemy came in and, and had taken their children and, and wives away while they were out in battle. When David got there, he was distressed. But the scripture says that David encouraged himself in the Lord. Faith told David at that moment that trust God and you can get back what the enemy stole from you. Oh, see, that's, that's heavy right there because, see, that because David had to encourage himself in the Lord. And every now and then, you, you, you're not going to be, you're not going to have a pastor around. You're not going to have a deacon around. You're not going to have a, a, a gospel music, a song around. All you're going to have is you and God. And, every, and you got to be able to encourage yourself in the Lord. You, David, I'm sure, began to remind himself, hold on now. Uh, let, me not, let me not forget what you've done for me. When I had to fight the giant, you took care of me. When I dealt with the lion, you took care of me. When I dealt with the bear, you took care of me. When, when Saul had, had all of the military chasing after me and I was hiding in caves, uh, you hid me. Hold on now, God. Let me, let me not forget what you've done. You've done all of these things. So faith, my faith is telling me right now that I got to trust you in this moment. I've, I've never been in this situation, God, but I, just, that doesn't mean you can't work it out. It doesn't mean you don't already know what to do. So I'm going to trust you. And the Bible says David was able to recover all. That's a word for somebody that you lost a lot. But don't worry, God will recover all. If you read in the testimonies that we read, Sister Leslie has said she lost everything in the fire. She lost everything, but now God has restored and blessed and given everything and probably a whole lot more because I know her testimony. God, she lost it, but God allowed her to recover and get it back. Well, I'm here to let you know we serve a God that can restore, a God that can fight your battles, a God that never fails, a God that can open doors, a God that you can trust, a God that can do the impossible. Now, most of the time, that's what we think when we talk about faith. When we think about faith, we think about not being afraid. We think about uh, uh, a God opening doors. We think about God making a way. We, that's, that's our normal way we think about faith. But if you read Hebrews 11, 7, there is something interesting that Hebrews 11, 7 gives us some insight on Genesis chapter 6. Hebrews 11, 7 says that, that talks about the idea that by faith, Abraham, Look, it says, give me, by faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear, hold on, we normally don't have fear and faith complementing each other when we talk about our theology. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By faith, he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. Hold on. What are you saying, Pastor? Hold on. Hebrews 11 is the, we call that the hall of fame of faith. It goes through from, from, from Abel all the way up to, to Jesus of, of people who, who, who stepped out on faith. And then when it gets to Noah, it says Noah by faith in holy fear did something. Ah, uh, so we talk about faith. We don't always normally have fear and faith. We normally kind of just oppose them and say faith is not fear and fear is not faith. But there is a place in time where, where, where fear and faith are married together in a way that God would want us to act. And so now we've been preaching through the book of Genesis there. I could not have time that in, in December when the Lord said preach through the book of Genesis that we would be in Genesis chapter 6 and the world will be going through a global pandemic and what do we need to do I couldn't have come up with that I couldn't have worked that out that is divinely ordained even in our Wednesday Bible study and we preach just through the Bible chapter by chapter verse by verse we came upon when Moses is doing the census hold on and we are about to do a census right now so we are synced up now we couldn't have planned that we started teaching the Bible studies line by line verse by verse chapter by chapter 17 years years ago and how would it be that we couldn't plan 17 years out to be in the exact spot in Bible study where Moses is doing a census and the importance of what the census was to the people of God and how could we be synced up on Wednesday and then on Sunday we decided December we're going to go preach in Genesis we could have been in chapter 10 by now or chapter 11 by now but we're right in chapter 6 this is divinely ordained I believe in this moment God wants to 
speak to us about what we need to do in this time. Now, I don't think God is going to destroy the world right now. I don't think that. I haven't heard from that. I don't think this pandemic is the same thing as a global flood. I'm not saying that. I'm not comparing that. But what I'm saying is Noah found himself in a situation that was going to affect a whole lot of people. And God gave him a word. And I think we need to pay attention to that because in this, what we see here, and that Noah was a man who walked with God. Noah was a man who was called righteous and blameless among the people. The scripture says that Noah found favor with God. Now, let's just play it back for a second. The Bible talks about in Genesis chapter 6 that the world was lost. Every inclination of man's thoughts was evil. You know what that meant? It meant the world had lost its mind. It meant the world, stuff had people been losing. Look, the, right now, the world has lost its mind. People are doing crazy stuff. Folk have, are forgetting about it. But look, it says, but in the middle of people doing crazy stuff, there was somebody that stood out. Noah. He didn't say everybody was walking with God, but he said Noah was walking with God. Now, that's the second time in scripture that you hear about somebody that, who walked with God. If you go back just a uh, chapter before in Genesis 5, it talks about Enoch walked with God. Now, it lists all these people in that chapter, but it gives one, it said this person had born this person and this person was a son of that person, that person was a son of this person. And then in the middle of that, it says, but Enoch walked with God. And he walked with God in such a way, he pleased God that he didn't see death. So hold on, Enoch walked with God. And then the second person that we hear about this walking with God is this man named Noah. He walked with God. He, was, he had found favor with God. He was righteous. He was blameless among the people, and he walked with God. Now, I believe, now, so let me help you here. What does walking with God mean? You see that about six more times in the Old Testament. People walk with God, or how they said, uh, they, would, they would say they are, their relationship with God was the same way of walking with somebody. And Amos 3.3 3 said, how can you walk together unless you agree? The idea of walking together meant that I was in sync with the other person. When my wife and I are walking together, amen, and we're not in a rush and we're just walking together because it's a regular day, she may grab my hand and I might grab her hand and we are walking together. We are in agreement. We are going in the same place. If she goes to the left, I will start changing my walk to the left. If she goes to the right, I go to the right. If I go to the left, she'll go to the left. If I go to the right, she'll, we are walking together. That's what folk who walk together do. They, they move with the other. And after a while, when you walk together, you start your right foot walk steps when her right foot steps. Or her left foot steps when your left foot steps. Your right arm swings when her right arm swings. Your left arm swings. Uh, you you are seeing the same thing. You are walking in the same direction. And so when it says Enoch walked with God or Noah walked with God, what is it saying? It's saying that at some point in their life, they had synced up with God so much, they could sense what God was doing, sense where God was moving, sense what God was up to. Uh, they were synced with God. And beloved, in this time, we need people who are synced up with God. Yeah, we're going through something right now in our world, in our cities, in our community. And, and we need people that are synced up with God. We need people that are walking with God. I hate to tell you right now, a whole lot of folks are just walking for themselves. A whole lot of people are, 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 are walking with their particular agenda, walking with, with a certain mindset. But I'm here to let you know the people of God, we need to walk with God. We've got to get synced up with the Lord. We've got to, and what does that mean for us? That means I'm praying all throughout the day. It means I'm getting in the word all throughout the day. It means as a the, the writer of Ephesians said, I am singing spiritual songs and hymns to myself all throughout the day, keeping myself encouraged, praising God all throughout the day. I'm walking with God. I'm in tune with God. I'm in sync with God myself that means I've got to spend more time with God. How can you say you're walking with God if you're not spending any time with God? 
Uh, but Noah and Enoch, they walk with God. And Noah, in our text, uh, he's called blameless and righteous among the people. That means that uh, he lived a different kind of life. Yeah, he was not walking in tune with the, with, the, with the world. He was walking in tune with God Almighty. That's important. If, you, if, you, if you're listening to me, uh, I want you to text and type in walk with God. Because that's what we got to do. We got to be walking with God. And that means I'm, I'm in tune. I'm in sync to what God is doing. And in this day and age, we need to be in tune with God. Now, what, what does that mean? I, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. On Wednesday, before school's closed, the Lord had told me, folk need to close schools for two weeks. I, I texted it. I typed it. It's in my Facebook feed. Because I, 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 I begin in the sense, what we need to do is not act as if things are regular. Now, you're saying, Pastor, that's walking in fear. No, that's where faith comes. Faith says we need to prepare. See, there's, with, with Noah, God told Noah, hey, I'm about to do something. The situation is about to happen. I need you to prepare. Noah, he didn't say, Noah, I'm going to do a flood. I'm going to have this flood's going to come on the earth. And Noah, I need you just to act as if nothing's going to happen. And saints of God, we have to be careful that we don't miss the fact that faith tells us a lot of things, but faith should also tell us to prepare. See, preparation is not the kind of ungodly fear. Preparation is what the Hebrew writer says in Hebrews 11 is holy fear. That's the difference. Because holy fear says, I'm not worried. I'm just going to be obedient to what God says. The Bible says that, that, that here, he says, Moses, he says, he, God, excuse me, God sees Noah. Noah is righteous. Noah is blameless. Noah listens to me. Now, we know from 2 Peter 2, 5 that Noah was a preacher. Noah was preaching that, that something was going to happen. Noah tried to tell other folk, you need to get ready. The Bible says Noah was a preacher. Noah was preaching. And Jude chapter, Jude tells us that Noah was preaching. So we know from 2 Peter, we know from Jude uh, that they were preachers. And Enoch was a preacher, excuse me. Enoch and Noah were both people that walked with God, but both in their time and in their age, both were preachers that warned people that you ought to get right with God. Now, often when stuff like this happens, let me tell you, what, what, what is faith? I said faith says prepare. That's our sermon for today. How can I prepare? First of all, you need to ask God about your own life. And they said, Lord, am I right? Because God said, when any of these things come on us, uh, Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, I think it's 1 Chronicles or 2 Chronicles, it said, if my people would humble themselves and pray. What does that mean? Humble myself. That means first thing I do is say, Lord, is there something I need to do about me? Get my heart right. Get my life right. Get my, get my mind right. You got to prepare. You got to get your spiritual self right. Amen. And I believe in this thing where in this season and time, God is calling for the saints of God to pray. God is calling for the saints of God to ask God for wisdom. And let me tell you, we're not just praying just to saying words of that. We're saying, Lord, give us wisdom on what to do. And you know what prayer is? Prayer is just talking to God. What was going on? Look, Moses, Noah was, and God were talking. Oh, y'all missed that. You missed that. In this situation, Mo, Noah is hearing directions from the Lord. Okay, okay. I should have got a bigger shout online than that. Everybody here is listening, they got a shout. But online, I should have got a bigger shout. They are having a conversation. And God is telling Noah what to do. We're in a situation in our country right now, and we need direction from the Lord on what to do. You're not going to get that if you're not prayed up. You're not going to get that if you're, just, if you're not seeking wisdom. Listen here. I, it is, the, people are really dying in certain places in this world. I want to help you. I, I've been paying close attention. I was sharing this with my wife. I've been paying close attention to what's happening, happening in Italy. 
when I had said on Wednesday before the NBA canceled their season, before the college games were canceled, I had said on Wednesday earlier, I said I had read the Italian report from their minister of safety, and he went through and everything he said was, he said at the end, cancel everything. Now, why did he say cancel everything? He said it because we, they made cr crucial mistakes at the beginning that could have saved them some time. They should have done some bigger containments at that moment. What did it mean? It just meant, hey, y'all, stay at home for a little bit. Hey, wash your hands. They didn't take it seriously. They didn't prepare. And he was getting, what he was doing was the, the, the minister, uh, and not the minister, that means that's a government official, what he was saying to the rest of the world, don't do what we did and ignore the problem. And now we're jammed up. Prepare. And so he, what he was doing was he was sending out some wisdom. And I'm, I'm telling you right now, beloved, our mission right now is, God, we need wisdom on what to do. We need wisdom on how to go. Mo Noah is talking. I want to say Moses so bad. Noah is talking, and God is talking to Noah, and he is giving Noah wisdom. Flood is coming. Ain't nothing you're going to be able to do about it. I've already decided the flood is coming, God is telling Noah. I, I'm not changing the flood. You can pray the flood away. The flood ain't going away. Y'all missed that. He said, God, God, I am, he did not tell Noah, Noah, I need you to get on your knees and pray the flood away. Flood wasn't going anywhere. The flood was coming. The issue was, what are you going to do knowing that the flood is coming? Jesus said in the last days, when, he, when the Lord comes back, he said it's going to be just like the days of Noah. Folk going to be marrying and giving in marriage. You know what that meant? They're going to be doing the stuff as if nothing was going on. And they'll be caught off guard. Now, what's my point? What am I trying to say? I'm not saying this thing is the worst thing that's going to ever happen to the earth. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, is that wisdom tells us that we need to prepare. Wisdom tells us that sometimes you, ain't, you can't pray it away. Sometimes you just got to prepare. Your prayer should be say, Lord, give me wisdom on what to do. I like that. So Noah, he, he had found favor with God. He had walked with God. He was righteous. And God says, Noah, I'm, I'm sending the flood. Nothing you can do about it. Nothing you can do about it. All you can do is prepare. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean you need to go to the store and buy all the toilet paper? No. Last time I checked, toilet paper will not stop <laughs> the pandemic. Does that mean you need to buy all the bread? No. Don't go do that. that matter of fact, the, the stores are going to be open. Now, the stores may not have the same hours because they may want to protect their workers too, and they've got to restock shell. Our job right now is not to panic. Our job right now is to be wise. Our job right now is to say, I need to avoid the activities that will lead me to put myself in a vulnerable position. Moses, excuse me, Noah, God tells Noah, build an ark. Build something that's going to put you in a safe space. Build something that's going to put you and protect you and your family. And now that's interesting to me. Because he, he didn't say, he said, okay, Noah, hey, the flood, flood's coming. I need you to prepare. And that's what, and so, and I think there's a, some, some challenges in a Christian community that folk think that preparation is fear. That preparation is not faith. Noah, who is listed in the Faith Hall of Fame, in, in chapter 11, the Bible says, by faith he built the ark. And, and he, what? he moved, the text says, in holy fear. There's a holy fear that moves with wisdom. And beloved, you listen to me, Second Baptist. Anybody else listen to me? We want to move in holy fear. Holy fear is wisdom. When God tells you prepare, you prepare. Amen? And so for us, what does that mean for us at Second Baptist? Yes, we did not tell four or 500 folk to show up today. Why? Because we have a congregation that's not only made up of a lot of older people, but folk that travel all over all the time. And we wanted to be careful. We wanted to protect you. And we, are, and we, and I was sharing with our trustee, we had to kind of take what's the benefit and risk. We normally, check this out. I'm going to help you. We normally have snow days in the, in the wintertime. 
it's not unusual for us to not have service a couple times during the winter time simply because of snow. We don't lose our minds then. We do that every year. This year we didn't have any snow. So we so it's not gonna it's not gonna hurt us to not have public services for a couple of days, a couple of weeks, or whatever we need to do, because that's normal anyway during this time. We just didn't get any snow. If there was two feet of snow, I wouldn't be here. Right? We couldn't do it anyway. So what does that mean? So being out of service for a couple of weeks, that's not going to hurt us. We will be, we will be fine because the same God, let me help you. Some people are having church today and tell everybody it's short because they're afraid of the offering. I'll be real. And some people are, are there because they want to be super faithful. Yeah. Amen. We want to, let me talk about the money for the issue. The same God that has provided for us, yeah. that brought us to the financial <laughs> destruction, our church was created in 1905. We've been through a couple of depressions. We've been through a couple of stuff. We've been through a couple of wars. Trust me, the same God. They blessed us in 1905, in 1980, in 1997, in 2008. The same God is going to keep us through this. See, we're not worried. A whole lot of folk told all their members to show up because they wanted to make sure there was money in that offering basket. Guess what? We're not worried. The same God that's been providing for us is the same God that's going to keep on blessing us and keep on keeping us. So we had no trouble telling you, you know what? Stay at home today. Read your word. Can I help you? Some of y'all needed some rest anyway. Some of y'all needed it. And some of y'all needed to not be out. It was too dangerous. You shouldn't be out at, at places where a lot of people are assembled. Can I help you if you're my young people? This disease doesn't really hurt young folk, but you can carry it. And your negligence can put somebody else in danger. Noah, God said, Noah, prepare, build an ark. Now, check it out. He built it in faith. Look, he built an ark before any rain had ever fallen. I need you to understand that. Before it, got, he, before it got bad, he began to do some stuff that positioned his family so when stuff got bad, they were okay. He had to do that in faith because he didn't see it coming. See, at second bad, what we're trying to tell you is that stuff, we're praying it doesn't get worse. That's our prayer. That's our prayer. We are praying it doesn't get worse. But some of the disease control people, some of the experts are saying it could get worse before it gets better. What the Italian ministers had let us know was, it's best to contain now, limit our interactions now, so that we can do better, more stuff later. If we don't limit our interactions and stuff now, it's gonna be worse later. And so Second Baptist, we wanna walk in wisdom. And so our preparation says we'll limit how many of our interactions are gonna happen. Why? Because we're trying to be smart now so that we don't suffer later. It's always to be smart up front. And so Noah, he, but God told Noah, prepare, build an ark. Prepare for safety. You never know what you might need to do. Now, can I help you? What if stuff got worse? Second Baptist, we need to be an ark. We need to be an ark. If something, and I, I'm, I'm put this out, if stuff gets bad, we need to be prepared to buy food for people. If stuff gets bad, we need to be prepared to help people out way more than we have to help people than we normally do. We, if stuff gets bad, we have to be, uh, we can't worry about some stuff because we have to worry about some immediate needs. That means for us as Second Baptist, we might need to be an ark in the South Side community. We probably can't be an ark for all of Richmond, but we can be an ark for the blocks of people that live around here. It might mean we've got to do something we've never had to do. It might mean, but that's by faith. And so what we don't want to do is to, is to not be ready. I shared with the men the other night, if, if it got worse, we need the men of the church and the women, but I was speaking directly to the men at that time, we need the brothers to step up because we may have to deliver food to folk who can't come out. We may have to bless folk that are struck and are stranded. We may have to make sure our sick and shut in. We have to be an ark. And so we've got to think, okay, if, 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 if nothing gets bad, praise God. We just didn't have church for a couple weeks. 
We ain't lose nothing. But if stuff became worse, Second Baptist, we've got to be an ark. We've got to be a place where folk can run in and, and find and find a shelter or refuge. We, we, I'm not sure how we all, what we might need to do, but I'm sure when time comes, God will give us wisdom. Amen. Because that we may have to be an ark of some sort uh, for the community, for the people around us. I'm praying that it, it won't get to that. But I want us to have an ark mentality now. I want us to have a, a Noah mentality now that just in case, maybe we now need to, maybe we need to make sure we, we got food in the food pantry. Just in case, we might need to be an ark. Because I don't know what will happen. I'm hoping everything's fine. I'm hoping we don't have to worry about nothing. But what if we need to be an ark? Let's make sure before that time comes, we already have an ark mentality. Let me tell you what ark mentality means. An ark mentality means that I don't hoard it for just me. Ark mentality, I'm trying to save those who want to be saved. I want to bless those who want to be blessed. I'm trying to be a blessing to my community. That's the ark mentality for us. God wants us, if we need to, he may be calling us, make sure the church is an ark of safety for the community. Because what if these kids are out? Now, they're getting food, but they don't have nothing to do. We got to be an ark. I don't know what that means right now, but the Lord had put it in my spirit earlier. He said, faith says prepare. That's our word for today. I can't speak for nobody else, but we have to prepare. That's what faith said. And it's not out of fear that's ungodly, but it's that kind of fear that Noah had. We call that a holy fear. A fear that's operating on wisdom. A fear that's operating on prayer. We've been talking to God. God, now, so what I need you to do second, I need you praying. I need you to say, Lord, show me what I need to be doing. And show us what we need to be doing in this moment. So that we will be acting in faith. And acting in that kind of faith that understands that sometimes faith says, I have to prepare. I have to uh, do stuff and to make sure for, for somebody to be safe, for somebody to be protected, for somebody to be fed, for somebody to be all right in this time. Hopefully, we won't have to worry about anything. Hopefully, nothing will we'll be fine. But if things got worse before they got better, the church has to be an ark. The church, the people of God, have to be a safe place, a refuge where folk can get, can, can, can find uh, uh, whatever they stand in need of, whatever we can do. We've got to have that ark mentality. Now, so I need you praying. I need you seeking God. I need you talking to the Lord. I need you in sync with God. I need you walking with God so that when God needs us preparing, I want us to be on one accord. I don't want us to, to one group want to do this. and I want us to really be, really be hearing from God so that we know exactly what to do, exactly how we need to handle this situation. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, right now, you said it's impossible to please you without faith. Lord, and you mentioned how Noah acted. Lord, help us to not be like the people that didn't listen to Noah. To not be like the people who were not paying attention to the signs. But let us be the kind of people that have a faith that understands that sometimes faith says prepare. Whatever that means. Yes, we did not tell four or five hundred folk to show up today. Why? Because we have a congregation that's not only made up of a lot of older people, but folk that travel all over all the time. And we wanted to be careful. We wanted to protect you. And we, are, and, we and I was sharing with our trustee, we had to kind of take what's the benefit and risk. We normally, check this out. I'm going to help you. We normally have snow days in the, in the wintertime. It's not unusual for us to not have service a couple times during the wintertime simply because of snow. We don't lose our minds then. We do that every year. This year we didn't have any snow. So we so it's not gonna it's not gonna hurt us to not have public services for a couple of days, a couple of weeks, or whatever we need to do, because that's normal anyway during this time. We just didn't get any snow. If there was two feet of snow, I wouldn't be here. Right? We couldn't do it anyway. So what does that mean? So being out of service for a couple of weeks, that's not gonna hurt us. We will, be, we will be fine because the same God, let me help you. Some people are having church today and tell everybody they're short because they're afraid of the offering. Yeah, that's right. I'll be real. 
And some people are, are there because they want to be super faithful. Yeah. Amen. We want to, let me talk about the money for this year. The same God that has provided for us, yeah. that brought us to the financial <laughs> destruction, our church was created in 1905. We've been through a couple of depressions. We've been through a couple of stuff. We've been through a couple of wars. Trust me, the same God they blessed us in 1905, in 1980, in 1997, in 2008. The same God is going to keep us through this. See, we're not worried. A whole lot of folk told all their members to show up because they wanted to make sure there was money in that offering basket. Guess what? We're not worried. The same God that has been providing for us is the same God that's going to keep on blessing us and keep on keeping us. So we had no trouble telling you, you know what? Stay at home today. Read your word. Can I help you? Some of y'all needed some rest anyway. Some of y'all needed it. And some of y'all needed to not be out. It was too dangerous. You shouldn't be out at, at places where a lot of people are assembled. Can I help you if you're my young people? This disease doesn't really hurt young folk, but you can carry it. And your negligence can put somebody else in danger. Noah, God said, Noah, prepare, build an ark. Now, check it out. He built it in faith. Okay, look, he built an ark before any rain had ever fallen. I need you to understand that before it got he before it got bad, he began to do some stuff that positioned his family. So when stuff got bad, they were okay. He had to do that in faith because he didn't see it coming. See, a second back, what we're trying to tell you is that stuff we're praying it doesn't get worse. That's our prayer. That's our prayer. We are praying it doesn't get worse, but. Some of the disease control people, some of the experts are saying it could get worse before it gets better. What the Italian ministers that let us know was it's best to contain now, limit our interactions now so that we can do better, more stuff later. If we don't limit our interactions and stuff now, it's going to be worse later. And so Second Baptist, we want to walk in wisdom. And so our preparation says we'll limit how many of our interactions are going to happen. Why? Because we're trying to be smart now so that we don't suffer later. It's always to be smart up front. And so Noah, he, but God told Noah, prepare, build an ark. Prepare for safety. You never know what you might need to do. Now, can I help you? What if stuff got worse? Second Baptist, we need to be an ark. We need to be an ark. If something, and I'm putting this out, if stuff gets bad, we need to be prepared to buy food for people. If stuff gets bad, we need to be prepared to help people out way more than we have to help people, than we normally do. We, if stuff gets bad, we have to be, uh, we can't worry about some stuff because we have to worry about some immediate needs. That means for us as Second Baptist, we might need to be an ark in the south side community we probably can't be an ark for all of richmond but we can be an ark for the blocks of people that live around here it might mean we've got to do something we've never had to do it might mean but that's by faith and so what we don't want to do is to is to not be ready i shared with the men the other night if if it got worse we need the men of the church and the women but I was speaking directly to the men at that time. We need the brothers to step up because we may have to deliver food to folk who can't come out. We may have to bless folk that are struck and are stranded. We may have to make sure are sick and shut in. We have to be an ark. And so we've got to think, okay, if, 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 if nothing gets bad, praise God. We just didn't have church for a couple weeks. We ain't lose nothing. But if stuff became worse, Second Baptist, we've got to be an ark. We've got to be a place where folk can run in and, and find and find a shelter or refuge. We, we, I'm not sure how we are, what we might need to do, but I'm sure when time comes, God will give us wisdom. Amen. Because that we may have to be an ark of some sort uh, for the community, for the people around us. I'm praying that it, it won't get to that. But I want us to have an ark mentality now. I want us to have a, a Noah mentality now that just in case, maybe we now need to, maybe we need to make sure we, we got food in the food pantry. Just in case, we might need to be an ark. 
because I don't know what will happen. I'm hoping everything's fine. I'm hoping we haven't to worry about nothing. But what if we need to be an ark? Let's make sure before that time comes, we already have an ark mentality. Let me tell you what an ark mentality means. An ark mentality means that I don't hoard it for just me. Ark mentality, I'm trying to save those who want to be saved. I want to bless those who want to be blessed. I'm trying to be a blessing to my community. That's the ark mentality for us. God wants us, if we need to, he may be calling us, make sure the church is an ark of safety for the community. Because what if these kids are out? Now, they're getting food, but they don't have nothing to do. We got to be an ark. I don't know what that means right now, but the Lord had put it in my spirit earlier. He said, faith says prepare. That's our word for today. I can't speak for nobody else, but we have to prepare. That's what faith said. And it's not out of fear that's ungodly, but it's that kind of fear that Noah had. We call that a holy fear, a fear that's operating on wisdom, a fear that's operating on prayer. We've been talking to God. God, now, so what I need you to do second, I need you praying. I need you to say, Lord, show me what I need to be doing. And show us what we need to be doing in this moment so that we will be acting in faith and acting in that kind of faith that understands that sometimes faith says, I have to prepare. I have to uh, do stuff and to make sure for, for somebody to be safe, for somebody to be protected, for somebody to be fed, for somebody to be all right in this time. Hopefully, we won't have to worry about anything. Hopefully, nothing will we'll be fine. But if things got worse before they got better, the church has to be an ark. The church, the people of God, have to be a safe place, a refuge where folk can, get, can, can, can find uh, uh, whatever they stand in need of, whatever we can do. We've got to have that ark mentality. Now, so I need you praying. I need you seeking God. I need you talking to the Lord. I need you in sync with God. I need you walking with God. So that when God needs us preparing, I want us to be on one accord. I don't want us to, to one group want to do this. and I want us to really be, really be hearing from God so that we know exactly what to do, exactly how we need to handle this situation. 